at Nerf Middle Schoolers. I'm back again today to share another book from Mac and Via with you. We're calling this virtual book talk number nine. Today is Thursday, May 14th, 2020. For today's book talk, I decided to move away from my typical fiction selections and do something from the nonfiction realm. This is a book that you can check out and read in Mac and Via. It is Michael Jordan, basketball superstar and commercial icon. If you're wondering why in the world I chose this book, it, part of it's because even though he doesn't play anymore and probably stopped playing before a lot of you were born, um, there recently on ESPN, and I don't know if some of you have seen this or not, but for the last several weeks, ESPN has been airing um, uh, these episodes, um, I think there's 10 of them total. I think this weekend is the last of it. It's called The Last Dance, and it focuses primarily on the 1997-1998 uh, Chicago Bulls season when they did win the championship that, that year. But the whole 10-episode series goes through Michael Jordan's um, career, beginning back in the 1980s and all the way up through the 98 season, which was, um, the 98 season was a, um, not controversial, but it was a trying season um, that year. So anyway, um, at least in my house, we are pretty heavily engaged in this, um, having grown up during this time. So, you know, we're well acquainted with uh, the Bulls during all of those championship runs and are thoroughly enjoying that. So I do know that um, these episodes do stream or they stream on ESPN. You can watch them on your TV, but they're also um, you can watch the recordings of previous episodes. Um, and just so you know, there is um, a unedited version and then there's a clean version. So check with your parents on that. Um, just a little bit of um, swearing in some of the episodes. So anyway, that's kind of what led me to choose this book for this week. Uh, I know a lot of you have heard of Michael Jordan. You're familiar with the fact that he played for the Chicago Bulls during most of his long and illustrious career. Um, the book does go back and talk about his growing up, which um, a lot of you may not be familiar with. I know from watching the ESPN episodes um, that he's very he was very close to his father, um, and I didn't realize how many brothers and sisters he had and his interest in other sports. So, um, But the book also will go through that as well. It does talk about him growing up. Um, it also talks about his family. This um, a lot of you may not know that he went to the University of North Carolina, um, and they do talk about that in this book as well. So this is a young collegiate Michael Jordan. Um, if memory serves me correctly, he left after his junior season, but I'm not completely sure. So you'd have to read the book to double check on that one. Um, so I'm going to read a little bit of the book to you. I did find some um, highlights of some of his greatest um plays. So uh, you can watch that while I am reading a little bit of um, Michael Jordan. Growing up. Michael Jeffrey Jordan was born on February 17, 1963 in Brooklyn, New York. He was the fourth child of five born to James Sr. and Dolores Jordan. Before Michael's first birthday, the Jordans moved to Willington, Wilmington, North Carolina, where Michael spent the rest of his childhood. From an early age, James Sr. and Dolores taught their children to approach hard work with a positive attitude. Michael's ultra-competitive nature as an NBA superstar can be traced to his home environment. If he and his two older brothers, older sister, and younger sister were not playing basketball, playing catch, or throwing around a football, they usually were engaged in intense contests of checkers or other board games. James Sr. even constructed two wooden backboards with rims and placed them at opposite ends of the backyard. Before long, the grass was beaten down and the dirt was as hard and smooth as a court. During daily backyard games, Michael could not, could not beat his brother Larry, but he kept trying. Although Michael was smaller than most of the boys his age, he was a natural athlete. In 1975, 12-year-old 12, 12 Michael started to develop a reputation as one of the area's top youth 
baseball players. As a pitcher, shortstop, and outfielder, Michael was named Mr. Baseball as the MVP for the Dixie Youth Baseball Association. Upon entering Trask Middle School, Michael was known as one of the school's top athletes. In June 1977, Michael won Certificates of Achievement for Baseball and Football and was named the school's outstanding athlete. In high school, his athleticism continued. In 1978, as a sophomore at Emsley A. Laney High School, Michael started at quarterback on the junior varsity football team. After that season, Michael attempted to land a spot on the boys varsity basketball team. Coach Clifton, uh, nicknamed Pop Herring, believed the five foot nine athlete had talent, but he knew Michael would benefit more from a season at the junior varsity level where he could participate on the starting squad than on the varsity team where he would get less playing time. So some of you know him for his basketball, but you may not be aware that um, he was a excellent baseball player. And I, I didn't realize until I read that is that he was pretty heavily involved in football too. Um, so anyway, that was just a little bit from the book. Um, the other thing I wanted to tell you is that I, I searched Michael Jordan in the McInvia database. And in addition to this book that I shared with you, um, we have a number of other books um, that have Michael Jordan included in them, as well as some of your other uh, favorite players. Uh, for example, the second book you see here, LeBron James um, versus Michael Jordan. I don't know if you guys know, or maybe you do, but there's an ongoing debate about which one of them is the uh, the goat, the greatest of all time. Um, so some other quick nonfiction reads, if if basketball is your thing, um, again, all of them available in Mac and Via. Um, if you're wondering how to find those books, um, you can just search it through um, the search uh, mechanism. Um, something else I wanted to show you, um, when you do look at a nonfiction book in Mac and Via, it's really nice because what you are actually looking at is what the book would actually look like in your hands. Um, with fiction, you know, it's it's not that impressive, but if you look at it, um, a nonfiction book on your computer, this is exactly how the book would look if you had it in print. All of the pictures, the captions, the little side sets there with addition in, additional information. Um, so it does make the experience pretty close to reading the book if you had it in your hand. So the section that I just read to you actually comes from chapter two, and this is what it looked like on my phone. Um, the writing is a little bit bigger here than on my phone, <laughs> which is nice because um, it's hard for me to see. So um, anyway, so the experience reading a nonfiction book in Mac and Via is, is pretty, pretty close to having the book in your hands, which is kind of nice. So again, um, my book talks can all be found on the Symbaloo, and the Mac and Via login tile is right next to that. Again, login is six-digit username, six-digit password without the BCS. And once you log in, um, click groups on the left, and then there is a tile that says Mrs. or uh, a list that says Mrs. Temperley's book talks, and that's where you can find the books. Um, just a reminder: if you are having trouble with YouTube. I have, um, I'll have two links for you on my website where my book talks are housed. Um, if you click the cover, that will take you to the YouTube video. If it's problematic for you, there will be an alternate link for you to click um, to watch the video. And um, again, there is an app for Mac and Via that you can add to your smartphone, whether it's iOS or Android. Just need your six digit username and your six digit password. So um, with that being said, um, for those of you who have not maybe um, tried one of the fiction books, maybe you'd like to try um, one of the nonfiction books. Um, so uh, stay tuned. I'll have some more virtual book talks in the during the next couple of weeks. Thanks for stopping by.